All right, you guys ready to talk about digital audio? I hope so, because we are diving right in. Um, okay, first of all, what is a? Let's talk about sampling rate, bit depth, and that kind of stuff. So sampling rate. What is a common sampling rate for CD audio? It is this 44.1 kilohertz. That's for CD audio. Uh, another common one is 48 kilohertz. And nowadays it can go up to 96 double that or uh, anyway but these two, these are the two most common so by default a lot of our cameras record at this rate um, I think our audio recorder by default does this one but you can switch either one any CD that you buy is played at this rate and pretty much any mp3 that you buy off iTunes or whatever plays at 44.1 kilohertz so what does this mean by sampling rate and why is that imp important? So this means how many times per second does uh, does the computer or whatever check to see what the, the waveform looks like. So if your waveform looks like this, let's say this is one second and here's our waveform you know that lasts for one second, so that means during this second, your machine is going to go through here 44,000 times and plot, you know, put a little dot where wherever the wave is. 44,000 times. There's no way for me to actually draw that. You can see what, if you want to do this yourself, take a file into Adobe Audition or GarageBand or any of those and zoom in all the way until you can see the individual dots and those are the samples. You have to zoom in really close to see it. Okay, The reason that it samples at 44.1 is because of a thing called Nyquist's theorem. Let's, uh, let's write this out. Oh, that's the smallest font ever. Okay. What? Where's my little font thing? I was thinking it'd be faster to. But I guess it won't. Nyquist's theorem. Okay, um, what Nyquist's theorem says is that your sample rate has to be greater than two times the highest frequency that you want to pick up. Okay, so in this situation, because the highest frequency that we can hear is 20 kilohertz, then according to Nyquist's theorem, we need to sample at at least 40 kilohertz. And then, just for good measure, there there's a lot of more advanced math to it, but they decided on this number just to give a little w wiggle room okay but this is so this is Nyquist theorem so anytime that you hear uh, the term Nyquist frequency that's referring to what the highest frequency is that you can pick up with a given sample rate so if my sample rate is 5 um, if my sample rate is 5 kilohertz then the highest frequency 
that it can pick up is 2.5 kilohertz. So that would be my Nyquist frequency. Okay, half of the sample rate. Okay, let's demonstrate this. I've got <coughs> some songs here. These are all the same version of Cortez the Killer. Well, originally by Neil Young. We're not going to play that though. I don't want to get dinged for copyright. Here's a here's a version I did. Maybe I'll get dinged anyway. Maybe YouTube will recognize this. So that's the original audio of this is an AIF file. That means it is not compressed. It's just the raw audio. See, it's a pretty big size for an audio file, 94 megabytes. Sample rate, 44.1. And then bit rate. This is tied into the sample rate. So this is, um, well, we'll get into what that means. Um, OK, so using iTunes, if you go in here to your settings, import settings, maybe you've messed with these here, you can choose the quality that you want of your uh, of your recordings. So higher quality, you usually can't tell a difference um, between the raw audio and this. There is a difference, but it's almost imperceptible to our ears, uh, unless you have really good headphones or um, speakers. Um, with this good quality, you're going to start to hear a difference. The higher frequencies are going to start to be gone. Um, you can actually go here to custom and set these a lot lower. So let's hear what those sound. I already did a few of these. So this one here, let's play the audio, the original one more time. Okay, the cymbals are sounding right, getting all the high frequencies. Hear the difference in this one. Can you hear how it kind of sounds almost underwater a little bit? The guitar sounds about the same because it's lower, but especially in the, the cymbals, any of those higher noises, it's going to sound kind of swishy. I don't know how to describe it, but. And then let's go down even lower than that. So now, notice our sampling rate has gone down to 22. So that means that the highest frequency it can record is 11 kilohertz. So anything above 11 is just getting cut off. That's why this sounds a lot lower than the other ones. And here is even worse. difference between these sample rates and the bit rates. Um, we'll get more into bit rates in a second. Okay, so next let's, uh, let's delete all this stuff. Let's get into bit depth. So you've probably heard the terms 8-bit, 16-bit, that kind of stuff. Uh, back when the original Nintendo came out, when I was in, a, you know, when I was a youngster, that was 8-bit graphics. Um, and then the Super Nintendo comes out, 16-bit graphics. We thought, oh wow, this is, these graphics are amazing on this. Um, I don't know what bit graphics are at now. A lot more than that. But audio <coughs> still uses 16-bit quite a bit. <laughs> uh, quite a lot. <laughs> so 8-bit is not used so much in audio unless it's like 
as a gimmick or for you know Nintendo core chip tunes or whatever um, but 16-bit is the standard for CD audio um, now it's pretty common to record in 24-bit or even 32-bit so what this means we're talking in binary here so since computers use binary this refers to how many levels of resolution they can store or how many different numbers it can store so this number is referring to well the uh, you you probably saw it in the the other video um, but let's just talk about how how this works for a second so here is how you count in binary so you've got your different columns your ones your twos your fours your eights and you'll put a zero or a one in them so in 8 bit that means you have eight columns here so the highest column goes up to 128 uh, if you have all of those ones then that means you would get uh, 255 Okay, so 8-bit has 256 levels, since we include 0. 16-bit has, well, let's figure it out. Here's the formula to figure out how many levels of resolution it has. You take your, you take the number 2 and you times it by itself as many times as you have bits, so 2 to the power of 16. Let's pull our calculator over here. 2 to the power of 16 is 65,000. That's how many levels of resolution. 65536. Okay, so any number that you want to know how many levels of resolution, you just take that number and put that into the what's that called? The exponent? I don't know. So if we wanted to know how many levels in 4-bit audio 2 to the 4th power that one we can probably do just like this 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 that's 4, that's 8, that's so you have 16 different levels that's not a lot but this is a lot and then 24-bit is in the millions. So the higher the bit rate, the bigger your file size is going to be, but these days you got so much space on those SD cards. Go for it. If you are exporting audio, usually 16 is fine. That's that'll go on a CD just just great. Um, but anything that you're recording and want to edit, it's a good idea to go at least with 24 bit. And this is this is why. Well, that's right here. Um, your bit depth is equivalent to your signal to noise ratio. So the higher the bit depth, the uh, higher signal to noise ratio you're going to have. Meaning, the less noise is going to be in your recording. So if you record at 24 bit, the noise floor on your on your audio is going to be really low. You can crank up your signal and there's still barely going to be any noise to that. So that's why it's a good idea to record anything at 24 bit because your instrument might be on the quiet side but then you can still boost it up. Um, your bit, uh, your sampling rate is the equivalent of frequencies. So the higher the sampling rate, the higher frequencies you can record. Okay, More noise, lower frequencies, the lower quality that is. Uh, let's play an example of this bit depth stuff. Alright, so here's that same recording. I've brought it into Audition. So let's play the original here.
so there's barely any noise and I can't I can't hear any through my headphones um, but there are some quiet spots in there so I exported this same song but this is converted to 8-bit let's hear this all that nasty stuff in there in between again the original okay so that's the difference between even just 16 bit and 8 bit <coughs> All right. What other questions do we need to go over here? That was with, uh -huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So I think that covers it. Um, a few other. these last few questions on the worksheet in case you're wondering quantization error so when you digitize something occasionally you know you've got your waveforms in here um, occasionally you know some info might get lost on the drive or there might be a scratch on the CD or something like that and maybe one of these uh, one of these points on the waveform gets dropped and it just goes you know so it's not in the right position for the waveform. That's called a quantization error. That can happen sometimes. Uh, what it sounds like when you're playing is just kind of a pop. I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't make it. But if you notice pops or an occasional crackling when you're playing stuff, it's probably some kind of quantization error. Um, then with uh, with CDs, is it better to buy a pawn shop with radial or circular scratches? Let's look at this. Radial scratches. So this site's telling you how to repair CDs. Um, so if you get a CD and you've got, these are called radial scratches because they go along the, the radius. Um, these ones are not a huge deal because CDs spin this way and so you're only losing occasional information just every time it crosses this line. Um, and I guess those are pretty easily cleaned. If you have circular scratches like this, that means that the whole time it's spinning it's losing the error so you might you might have lost you know 10 whole seconds while it's spinning these ones are a lot harder to, to get rid of so that's just because of the way digital information is stored okay that is it for you should be able to do all the the homework for this assignment and hopefully this, uh, this is helpful to you see you next time